is interracial marriage fornication? Uh, this debate came up a while back, and I wanted to address it and haven't had a chance to, so let's look at the Scriptures, what the Scriptures say here. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8 it says here, Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed. Okay, what's it talking about there? This is a reference back to an event in the Old Testament. Let's turn there. Numbers chapter 25. Keep your hand there in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to be coming back. But Numbers chapter 25. I'm going to be addressing something else here too, which is very interesting in this passage. Numbers 25 verses 1 through 9. Okay, let's read these verses here. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. Moab was a descendant of Ham. Okay? Um, and they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bow down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses, and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. Wait a second. Those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8, it says, uh, three and twenty thousand. Uh-oh, it's a contradiction. No, it's not. Look at First Corinthians chapter ten, verse eight. We'll get back to the interracial marriage thing here in just a minute, but just to show you how an atheist could come along and they could try to destroy your faith in the Bible and say, see, clear contradiction. Old Testament's twenty four thousand, New Testament twenty three thousand. Ah, contradiction. No, just read plain English. First Corinthians ten, verse eight, and fell in one day. 3 and 20,000. Back here in Numbers chapter 25, verse 9, and those that, that died in the plague were 20 and 4,000. All right? So the first day it was 23,000. After that, 1,000 more people. See? No contradiction. There are no contradictions in the King James Bible. So that's a whole other issue. But let's get back to the topic at hand here. Paul doesn't say... Um, here in verse 8, neither let us commit interracial marriage or, or, or messing around with idols or whatever else. He calls the sin fornication. He doesn't even mention the, the you know, men of Israel going after Baal Peor. He says fornication. Well, there's other times that they committed fornication. Why not pick out some other time? Why would he single out this time of interracial relations, whoredom, there? And you say, well, it's, just, it's all fornication. See, it's fornication they were doing. It's whoredom. But look at one of the things there. Why would Paul single this out? It's very interesting. Um, verse 6, Numbers chapter 25, verse 6. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the, in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Okay, then he goes into his tent there. Uh, when, uh, he went after the man of Israel into the tent. Now, if this woman had been just a regular, you know, Jewish woman, and he brings her before the congregation, and he brings her before Moses and things, and then he takes her into his tent, in the Old Testament, that's marriage. Was this man just saying, hey, look at my whore here. I'm going to go in and, you know, fornicate with this whore here. He was doing what would have been a lawful marriage in the Old Testament. Brought her before the congregation and then took her into his tent. That's a lawful marriage in the Old Testament. This is an interracial marriage, in other words. And yet, 
Phinehas goes in there, Numbers chapter 25, goes in and kills them both. And they don't say, oh, now, hey, you shouldn't have done that. And it's very interesting because what was the big thing of overturning the anti-miscegenation laws here in America? Loving versus Virginia. A black woman and a white man back in the early 1960s. And they're in the privacy of their own home. And a police officer comes in and he says, you're under arrest. This, what you're doing is illegal. And they get two Jesuit lawyers. Uh, I can never remember the one guy's name. It was Cohen. Bernard Cohen, I think, was the one guy. And then, ironically, a Jew, a Jewish lawyer, you know, that's trained by the Jesuits. He went to Georgetown University. And then the other guy's a Jesuit trained lawyer as well. And they overthrow the anti-miscegenation laws, Loving versus Virginia. How ironic. Back there in the Old Testament, it's spoken of positively. Phinehas goes in there and says, Jewish man and Midianitish woman, again, one of the descendants, you go back far enough to Ham, you know, in that line of Ham, and he goes in there and he, and he kills them both to turn away God's wrath from the nation of Israel. And yet in America, you know, God bless America, uh, sure. Black woman, white man. Oh, let's overthrow these anti-miscegenation laws here in America. Isn't that interesting? So, um, you know, and, and people can take this thing and they can make it into some kind of a deal. I know that this one, there was a guy that I heard about that was that uh, was coming out and saying that all fornication then in, in the New Testament is always a reference to interracial marriage because marriage in the Bible is, is two people joining, you know, a man and a woman joining themselves together in the marriage bed. Um, no, uh, because you see a true biblical marriage is you're doing the thing publicly and saying, hey, we're going to be coming before the congregation. We're going to be presenting ourselves as husband and wife. We're going to be going to the family, whether the family agrees or not. We're going to be coming and saying, hey, we're getting married here. We're going to live together as husband and wife. There's a lot more to it than just the marriage bed. All right. That's kind of closing the deal, so to speak. But the point is, that's biblical marriage. And this guy back in Numbers chapter 25, verse 6 there, he did what would have been considered a biblical marriage. But that, that's, that was kind of there, but it doesn't really fall under the classification of fornication in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8. The fornication there is just all about the whoredom of verse uh, 1 in Numbers chapter 25. See, people mess with all kinds of stuff, you know. And they say, well, uh, the New Testament doesn't openly prohibit it. And think, well, there's prohibitions all through the Old Testament. And again, I have did a whole study on that whole issue. But just a very interesting thing there. And I, I know uh, Peter Ruckman has it in his commentary, the whole thing of, um, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8, talking, says fornication is referring to interracial relationships. And, you know, look at what God did, too. I mean, back there in Numbers chapter 25, uh, verse 4, And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the, the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And I realize they're going after false gods, but it's also the interracial relationships. That's part of it. You know? And people say, well, but, but, but what about Ruth? What about, what about this passage here? See, you know, what a lot of people do is they'll look for exceptions. They'll look where God's grace was there for somebody. And, that you know, they do something that's against other parts of Scripture, and they'll say, well, I'll take that exception and overthrow the rule. Uh, that's not the right way to do it, right? And I just, you know, whatever you want to make of this, you, I mean, whatever. People are going to fight about it, and I realize that, and whatever else. I mean, it's just, it's, it's crazy how people don't, just don't even have common sense anymore. Uh, it's just... It's just insane to me. You know, something that was illegal back before 1962, now it's fine and, and good and whatever else. And the, and the churches, Christians in the past, before the 1960s and things, they would have been against interracial marriage, but now today we're for it. We're more progressive. So we're better. So as, as the Bible says there'd come a great falling away, or a falling away first there, there's this great apostasy, people turning their ears away from the truth, being turned unto lies. That doesn't count in this case. The church is getting progressive. We're, we're accepting more things now, so we're getting better. People in the past would have frowned upon it, but now today it's okay. <laughs> right. So, just wanted to make a comment or two on that passage there. Number one point, uh, there's no contradiction between the two passages. 23,000 in one day, 24,000 total back in the Old Testament. 
And secondly, um, I would really stay away from interracial marriage, right? Um, I know people are just going to flip out and, you know, I get videos exposing Brian Denley or coming out and whatever else. Yeah, you know, whatever. Um, but just wanted to do a video on that now for a while. So there it is. And uh, that's all I have to say about that matter.